Um, so you're welcome to our last part one. Um, those of points that we want to look at. We want to look at the so-called half line. Half line. Okay. The half line is described by uh, this equation. Uh, the argument of z minus z naught is equal to theta. Okay. So this is the loops of points starting from a point. Uh, let's call it z naught. Okay. Um, z naught with some angle, and then these loops of points moving this way, making an angle of theta with a positive x axis. Okay. So if this is a complex plane, you start from a point z naught. Um, you make an angle of theta, and then you draw a line moving away from z naught. All right, with an angle of theta. That is called the half line, and it's described by this uh, by this equation. Now note that it is a half line because this part of the line is not included. Okay, because if you sketch if you sketch a line in this direction, this line does not make the same angle of theta as this line. All right. This line here is an angle negative or an angle more than theta. Okay, so for theta, whatever theta is, right, it's fixed. So that is why it's called half line. Okay, good. So how do we actually know that this is a line? Okay, you can let you can let as usual z be equal to um, some x plus y i. You can let z not be a point a plus. Di, okay. If you plug it into here, what you get is you have an argument of uh, x plus y i minus a minus di. This is equal to theta, right? And of course, this means that the argument of I can combine the real ones minus a, right? And then y minus di. This is equal to zero. Okay. So if this is some complex number, right? If z um, some complex number z is equal to x minus a plus y minus d i, right? Then to find the argument of this complex number, remember that the argument will be equal to the tan inverse of the complex part, which is y minus d all over the real part, which is x minus a. Okay? That's how we found the argument of uh, a complex number. So, of course, from here, you can find the term of both sides. So, this basically implies that the term of theta is equal to y minus b all over x minus a. This also means that y minus b is equal to I'm going to have time of theta multiplied by x minus a. And of course, this is the equation of a line, okay, from the point AB. AB is Z naught, right? From the point AB and makes uh, a slope with a slope of time of theta, okay, from the positive x axis. So this equation is described by that. So, so this is the Cartesian form of this equation, all right? So that is called the half line. So we can look at an uh, example of the half line. Okay. So let's get rid of this and, um, and do two examples. Okay. So sketch. Uh, sketch. Sketch. Uh, the locus of Z for best. So let's do A. We want the argument of Z minus 2 is equal to some pi over 3. And then B, let's look at the argument of Z. Say minus 2 plus 3 pi is equal to 2 pi over 3. We want to sketch that. Okay? So once again, once you see, you know, once you see something like this argument of Z, the complex number is equal to some angle, right? Then begin thinking about a half line. So that, that's the half line. So how do we uh, sketch that? So we just need to find our z naught, and then uh, get the an angle, and then we are done. 
So we have for the first one uh, argument z minus two is equal to pi over three means that I'm at a point two. Know that I can rewrite my z now z minus. This is the same as 2 plus the minus 0 1, right? So my z naught is the point 2, 0. Okay? So on the complex plane, you are at a point 2, 0. So that is this point, x is 2, y is 0, right? Um, you're going to make an angle of pi of 3, and then from here, you move. So this is the locus of points. All the points along this line describe, are described by this. So this angle here is pi over 3. Note that 2 itself, 2 itself is not included. Alright? The z naught itself is not included in the locus. See why? Because if you write z minus z naught is equal to some theta. If z is equal to z naught, then I'm looking for the argument of zero, but that is not defined. So in fact, I think you would have to put you know, this uh, circle here to indicate that the point itself is not part of the locus. So any point beyond us along this line, half line, making an angle of pi over three is the locus. That's that is described like this. Okay? Then the last one um, is uh, also straightforward. So we want to um, we want to um, let me get rid of this. So the B, I'm going to I have argument z minus two twelve. So let me rewrite this z minus um, this. I'm going to I write as three minus two i. Right? Is equal to two i over three. It's negative as positive. So this is the same as that. All right? So the point, the point Z naught in this case would be a point x is two, and the uh, y level would be between three. So you stay, look for that point. So on the on your complex plane, look for a point two negative three. So let's this is one and two, negative one, negative two, negative three. So one two, two negative three. Let's see we are here, right? Again, um, we are there, okay? These guys, and so on, okay? So we are here. So what you do is from here, you do something like this. And then you, you have an angle of 2 pi over 3, so that's like 120 degrees. So from here, you measure 120, 2 pi over 3, like that. And then from here, you go. Okay, that's supposed to be straight. So this angle should be 2 pi or 3, and then you move along this. So this line here is what is described by this. Okay, so that is the locus of, um, of points um, that satisfy this equation, which is uh, called the half line. Okay? And of course, you can always find the Cartesian form of the equation by doing the same thing as I did before. So, for instance, if you want the Cartesian, um, the Cartesian form of this equation, you do the same thing. Uh, maybe we should do it for this. It's, it's, um, it's probably much easier and straightforward, right? So, if you wanted the Cartesian form of this, you do the same thing as we did before. You let the be equal to x plus uh, y i, right? So that um, you better have you actually want the argument of x minus two, right? Plus y i is i three. And so this implies that uh, i on three is the time inverse of um, the y is y. The x component is the x minus. Two, okay, and so you have y over x minus two is equal to tan the tan of pi on three.
time of high on three, you can look at us, this is the square root of three, okay? And so the Cartesian form of that equation would be y is equal to the square root of three multiplied by x minus two, okay? So that would be the Cartesian form. So this would be the Cartesian form. Okay? And if I do the same thing for this, to find the Cartesian form of this equation, just let it be because of x plus y. Alright. Now, the next uh, locus that we want to look at. So, if you like the fourth one, so these are basically some fundamental basic no side that you have to be familiar with. So, the last one that we want to actually tackle is the arc. So, number four is the arc of a circle. Okay. In a complex plane, the arc of a circle is described um, is described by um, by this the argument of z minus z naught over z minus let's call that z one is equal to some angle theta where theta here like q zero. Okay. So this is this is the arc of a set I thought it describes. So this is a little bit more um, complicated, or if you like, a little more difficult to understand than the previous ones. But we'll try to explain this. Okay, there are a few things that you need to explain this one. But I'll tell you what this represents. This represents uh, if I have two points, um, let's say z naught and z one. Z naught is here, um, and then I have z. Uh, Z1, let's say it's here, okay? Again, these points are not really part of it. What this is saying is that there is an arc that connects these two points. All right? This arc, okay, part of a circle. And then these two, uh, these two lines, there are half lines that make an angle or subtend an angle at the arc. And the angle that they subtend is equal to this angle here, theta. So that is what this means. They say that I have two points. Um, they subtend an angle of theta. All right. The locus of this point here, where they intersect, is this uh, arc. All right. So the point here is moving, making an arc um, of a circle. So that is basically the meaning of that. Now, how do you really? Understand this. How how do you understand what we why do we know that this is actually the arc of the circle? Now there are a few things you need to um, to know or to remind yourself with in order to understand it. Okay. So one of them is the fact that we learned. Okay, when you are learning about circles, you come across you come across this fact. So some things to note. All right, is the fact that, um, let me call it say A, the fact that if I have a circle, all right, give me the circle, then the angle, angles that are subtended at um, the same segment of the circle. Okay, so the angle here, let's call it alpha, because they are the same segment, like the same parts of the circle, the angle they make is the same. All right, and they make the same angle alpha. It doesn't matter, so I can have another one that goes here. This angle must also be alpha. Okay, so this is an important fact that is used to show that this is actually the arc of the circle. The other one that uh, we will use later on is that if this is the diameter of the circle, um, this will always have kind an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. The angle here will always be 90 degrees because this is the diameter of the circle. So that is the number one fact or two facts that you need to keep in mind. All right? As we show that this is actually an arc. The second thing that you will have to note is that we already showed that if you have the argument of, say, uh, z1 over z2, 
Alright? This is the same as the argument of Z1 minus the argument of Z2. Alright? We have shown this. And you can easily prove this if you use their um, if you use their uh, exponential form of a complex analysis to show that if you divide them, then the argument are the differences. Alright? So we are we are going to use in the next video, I'm going to use these two facts to actually show that if I have if I have whenever I see something like this, I know that it represents the arc of a cycle. Alright? So watch out for uh, the next video.